Mufasa to the pack. It is pack here. AKA your mama's best friend. And NBA 2K21 added 15 new players to the game in Next Generation. I'm going to cover all of them right now. But before this video starts, so leave a like on the video because you'd be surprised how much it helps the channel out. And we're starting with the 15th player, and that is Greg Foster on the Los Angeles Lakers. Six foot 11 and was a considerable Bruh. prospect on the team. Jeez. I, can you even make a prospect in my play anymore? I don't even think you can. He was on championship Lakers team. He went to three NBA finals and he had a 13 year career, which is pretty long for somebody who was a 69 overall. And he played in Utah for a long time. He was on the team. Well, the couple of teams that went to the finals in that time. And he never averaged more than six points per game. And he is currently the Pacers assistant coach. So he has a very well in-depth career in the NBA. Never was that really good though. Up next at number 14, we have Jim Peterson, who is on the 1991 Golden State Warriors, 70 overall, and is straight up considered a rebounder, which I mean, I guess that's fair. Six foot ten. Now, Jim Peterson had a good career with the Rockets. He had an eight season career with them, and he is or was the coach for the Lynx in the WNBA. But at the end of the day, he was just okay and didn't have like a special career or anything like that. At number 13, it is Jacques Vaughn. Look at that smile. He's, he's just like 70 overall. It is an offensive initiator on the team. Now, Jacques Vaughn had a 12-year career. He was in the NBA Finals with the Jazz with this team. And also, he even averaged 7 points per game with the Hawks and is currently the assistant coach for the Nets, who was about to get James Harden, and that's terrifying. And he did win a championship with the 2007 San Antonio Spurs. So he did have a well-versed career, but was not like an amazing player or anything like that. But he has been added into the game. At number 12 on the list, we have Wayne Cooper, who, by the way, has an amazing mustache. Now, he was on on the finals appearance blazers that played against michael jordan he was a 70 overall also considered a rebounder and wayne cooper was a lot older at this point in his career and also he had a good career with the nuggets where he actually ended up having 7777 points for his entire career and i bet you didn't know that now you do at number 11 on this list we have casey jacobson who was on the 2003 phoenix suns with their best player being sean marion and also i believe Stefan Marbury. So he was on this team, wasn't like the biggest piece on this team. He's literally just considered a shooter, 71 overall, and also had a five year NBA career. He didn't play much and he only averaged eight points per game for the Hornets one season, and that's all he's ever really done. Up next at number 10, we have Eddie Mast. Eddie Mast was added into NBA 2K21, and that is not his correct face scan, but I guess they tried their best, right? But Eddie Mast was a real NBA player, 69 overall. He died of a heart attack, sadly. When he was playing pickup at 46 years old, he played three NBA seasons only, and also he never averaged more than three points per game, but was on this Knicks team. Up next at number nine, we have Dennis Hobson, who is on the 1991 Bulls that won the championship with Michael Jordan for, I believe, the first time. Now, Dennis Hobson was a 72 overall, considered a slasher in the game. He did win the championship with the Bulls, and that season he did average 11 points per game, so he was an important player on this team. But he barely played at all in the playoffs, so he wasn't really contributing that much to the championship. But in the regular season, he was an important piece to the team. He averaged 16 points per game one season with the Nets, which is actually pretty good. And he coaches Lourdes University and was the third overall pick in the draft when he was drafted. Up next, at number eight, we have Chris Morris, who was on the finals Utah Jazz. Chris Morton was a 72 overall, three-point shooter, according to 2K. And also, he made the all-rookie team. He was solid for a long time with the Nets. He was a versatile player. In this first ever playoff series, he averaged 19 points per game, which is really good. He was a fourth pick in a draft, and he also shattered a backboard once in his career. Dude was pretty good. Up next at number seven, we have Winston Bennett. Winston Bennett played for the 90 Cavaliers, was a 73 overall. He played three seasons. He never averaged more than six points per game, was Kentucky's head coach for a while, and then he got fired because he hit a player. <laughs> And that's his entire career. It's kind of sad. Up next, at number six, we have Kevin Gravy on the 1985 Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Kevin Gravy was considered a 73 overall shot creator. And that's a pretty accurate statement because he was a shot creator. So when Phil Chenier got injured in 1978, 
Gravy became the starting point guard. I know it's a small four, but he was a starting point guard for the championship bullets in 1978. And he had a great career with them. He averaged 17 points per game one season. And he was one of Kentucky's greatest players of all time. At number five on this list, it is Wesley Matthews. Sorry, Wes Matthews. That's the dad of Wesley Matthews. Even though he was the father of Wesley Matthews, who ended up also having an NBA career, he was apparently a deadbeat dad that had no involvement in Wes Matthews' life, which is kind of messed up when you think about it. Now, he did win a championship twice with the Lakers. He did end up doing that. Now, he did win two NBA championships, but apparently he didn't really play much at all. At number four on this list, we are with John Long. John Long is a 74 overall on the Bad Boys Pistons of the 1989 season where they won a championship. He did have a great career with the Pistons, played with them for a long time. He was a borderline all star for a long part of his career even one season he averaged 22 points per game and was a second option behind Isaiah Thomas so he was important and he won a championship so he was actually one of the better players in this list honestly at number three it is Scott Burrell yes that's Scott Burrell the one that was the most bullied player of all time to Michael Jordan yeah Michael Jordan did not like this dude and they made his face scan kind of look like him I guess it needs work but I guess it kind of looks like him 74 overall added on to the Bulls team yeah wasn't the best player on this team but they considered him better than Steve Kerr which is a weird thing to think about actually which is even weirder is that he is considered the sixth best player on the championship team which is crazy he averaged 13 points per game with the Hornets once which is actually better than you'd think and he actually did kind of okay in the playoffs this season so who knows so i mean it's not that bad at number two on this list they actually added big baby davis yes glenn davis is back into 2k they lost the rights to him and now he's back into the game 75 overall in this game now big baby was actually a solid player one of the thickest players of all time yes i said that and he won a championship with the celtics this season not only that he averaged 15 points per game one season with the magic so he was clearly a good player and had a serious career and the last player on this list at number one fred Hetzel. Now, I don't know why he has the highest rating of anyone on this list as a 76 overall. When you, I mean, this is probably why. He was the first pick in the draft when he was drafted. Okay, he made the all rookie team and he had a season that he averaged 19 points per game with the Warriors. And then he did play with the Lakers the season they lost to the Bucks. I mean, he was a great player, but not at this point of his career anymore like he was already kind of on the decline on top of that he was a great college basketball player so maybe that's why he's rating so high but yeah he's also added into this game and making these teams that are older and like the 60s and 70s teams a lot deeper which is nice to see okay that is everything that is everyone that's been added who do they need to add i'm sure there's a lot of players we wish leave it in the comments below and if you like this channel give it a sub and i'll see you guys next time if you want all the latest news of nba 2k and also nba in general you should follow me on my twitter account at pack hoops yt not only that i do giveaways all the time when it comes to vc games and also even consoles so check it out follow me and see you there